Hello, this is Desmond Butts, and I am Gyro CFI and President of Texas Auto Gyro and Life Sport. Today, we're going to teach you how to do pre-trip inspection on the MTO Sport that may work on also other models. And then we're going to take you for a ride in the pattern and show you how it's done correctly. So, let's get started. First thing we need to know for sure is are we ready to be able to fly? Do we have all the important documents that we need to be able to take this ship into the air legally and safely? Well, let's see. First, do we have our student pilot certificate or do we have our proper pilot certificate if we already have a license? Check one. Number two, if we're a sport pilot, do we have a driver's license or do we have a current medical certificate? Driver's license, and in my case, current medical certificate right here. So that part's done. Now do we have the required documents inside the aircraft? Let's see. Here we go. This is the operation manual for the plane and the weight and balance. And then here we have the airworthiness certificate and the registration. And if need be, in other places, you might need a radio license as well. So we have all the documents that we need. Now let's do the pre-inspection on the aircraft. First we'll start with a visual inspection and then we'll do a fuel sample. I like to do that first and then get to the nitty gritty on the other things that are necessary. The fuel sample is done by taking a sample from each side of the fuel tank and checking for bad particles in the fuel. So I'll do that and then I'll show you the sample. Here's a sample of fuel here, and what we're looking for is to see if there's water or debris in the bottom of the fuel. Okay, this sample looks clean, not a problem. Next, we're going to look at the controlling surfaces of the aircraft to make sure that they're in operational condition and they don't have any problems with them. This includes inspecting the rotor and cleaning it, because even if there's debris on the rotor and it doesn't have any problems, it can still reduce lift up to 30%, just like frost on the wing of an airplane can. So bugs and debris or frost can also cause problems with lift on a rotor as well as fixed wing planes. Includes a nice clean towel and a little bit of spray in order to help clean the rotor properly. So we'll inspect this. Wiping it down from the top edge of the leading edge of the rotor blade all the way down to the bottom. Next, we'll do an inspection of the prop. What we're doing here is we're looking to see if we notice anything obvious. Nicks, dings, cracks, things like that that are going on in the prop. Then we're going to look over the engine to make sure that the Rotax 912 has all of the spark plug uh, wiring complete. There's no cracks in any of the uh, manifolds or any of the exhaust systems so that we prevent it having a problem or something breaking off and going through the prop in flight. This also includes excessive oil leaks or any other situation that may create a problem on this. cabling systems, tie down wires, any of these kinds of things. Excessive oil use, anything that uh, we would notice that we need to note to make sure that we're going to have a good safe flight. Now we're going to check the oil. 
On the MTO, the oil is checked by releasing the rear seat and rocking the seat forward. First, remove the oil lid cap and set it on the seat for a moment. The next thing we do is we need to pre-prime the oil system so that it is pumped through the sump in order to make sure you have adequate pressure and the oil level levels off correctly according to the manufacturer's specifications. Checking the oil is done by actually hand pulling the prop through. First, double checking to make sure, just in case, a quick check to make sure all magnetos are turned off. That way we can prevent having the engine have a start by hand propping. If you listen carefully while this is done, you should hear a gurgling sound from the oil sump. There it goes. That tells me it's okay now to be able to check the oil. And in this case, the oil looks great. We should be good to go. This hopefully will give you a bird's eye view of the inside of the MTO frame. And what we're looking for is to see if there's any unusual cracks or situations. Make sure everything moves freely and correctly. And there's no rubbing or problems or excessive wear going on in any of the joints. Checking the wiring, all the harnesses, and everything else to make sure that everything is in proper working order. Next, we're going to spend some special attention to the rotor head uh, and teeter bolt area itself. First, we're going to grab the grease gun. And we're going to check all the connections, make sure that they're good, and we have no problems with them or binding. Then we're going to grease the Zerks to make sure the rotor head has proper amount of lubricant. Then we're going to grease the teeter bolt itself. And this should be able to be turned with your fingertips. There's a Zerk fitting on the top. We'll go ahead and do that. while we grease it. Sometimes a little excess grease I'll put onto the, uh, the wheel there for the pre-rotator to help lubricate it slightly. Now, we're going to go ahead and inspect all the tires to make sure that there's no flat spots, they're not low, and also the brakes on it. And I, I like to do this by rolling it back and forth a little bit to see the whole uh, tire surface. Okay, 
and I'll be checking the others as well. All right, now I'm going to check the rudder cables that are going back to the rudder and make sure there's no frayed or cracks in these cables. This is to help all controlling surfaces are sure, free and clear. This is to provide a little bit more visual inspection. Also, I felt to check that we want to darn well make sure we got gas in here. As you can see, it moving up right here by my fingertip. Shows the fuel level. That's enough for about two and a half hours of time. We're only going to be going for a little while, so it shouldn't be a problem. Show a couple of other spots that we check just to make sure. See if there's any cracks in the welds there. Right in by the battery box that way. Also, looking underneath. All right, so if we review our checklist, we can see that the pre-flight's complete. And now we'll get in and find ATIS and take care of the things we need to with the tower. Solo uh, is uh, run up complete. Cessna 9 or 8 Alpha, contact tower 118.4. At the tower 118.4, 9 or 8 Alpha. All right, Roger. Sounds like we got some uh, busy uh, tower stuff and ground going on right now. What we're doing now is we're checking our radios to make sure they're set properly. We're going to have to listen to ATIS. ATIS is actually going to be 12495. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we'll go ahead and set it. Get our correct, uh, get our correct frequency settings here. Move it to the top. 800 overcast. Temperature 232.19 or altimeter 2988. Localized runway 17 right approach in use. Landing on a party runway 17 right, runway 17 left. Hazardous weather information for Southeast Texas and coastal waters available on high watch, light watch, flight service frequencies. Use cost for directivity on the airfield. All fixing aircraft advise ground control when your run up is complete and ready for departure. Advise under contact, you have information, Charlie. Information, Charlie, okay. Move, move the uh, ground frequency on top and the tower frequency on the bottom. Remember, we have information. We, we need to remember we have information, Charlie. Okay. Right now what I want to do is we're going to go through all the systems checks before we start, make sure everything's the way it needs to be. Okay, seatbelts are secured. We got the frequencies in. We know we have Charlie. We're going to go down our, uh, our list here. We always hold the stick forward, just like I'm doing right now. Okay, sometimes I'll put my knee against it to hold it there while I'm doing other things while I'm doing run-up. We're going to check the brake and the strobe is on. And those switches are located right down here and the strobe and the second fuel pump are in the up position down there. Take a so look around from back to front, make sure nobody's around us, and clear the pump. Clear! Yeah. There we go. We have the engine going. Making sure they turn. We're looking at this and reading it down. 
Uh, pressure's normal. It's about 30. It's going to be great, so we don't have a problem there. I'll stop up here and contact the uh, ground so I can taxi. Cutlass 4221, hold short of runway 17 left approach. Contact tower 118.4 and give way to the Cessna ahead. Giving way to the Cessna, hold short of um, 17 left and contact tower 4221. It's ground, gyro 446 Beck Tango, Texas flight with Charlie. Like to taxi to the triangle and do some touch and go. Six Quebec Tango hooks ground. Taxi to the triangle. Expect runway one seven left. Squawk five three four six. Use caution for the Cessna ahead inbound. Taxi to the triangle. I'll use caution for the Cessna and squawk five three was a four six. So. Oh, I'm going to put 5346 in there. I think I got it right. I might have actually uh, forgot what that was. I'll double check with them later in the triangle when I do my run-up just to confirm so we don't get uh, something out of whack when we're in the pattern. So uh, Here at Hooks, we have a waterway for float planes right there, and uh, we taxi in a section called the Triangle. And there's a run-up area in there, and we will go there and finish our checklist on the run-up and then uh, declare that we are ready for departure from that point. It's actually a beautiful uh, overcast day. It's uh, smooth there, and it's uh, about 80 degrees, so it's pretty nice uh, to even wear the short sleeves that I've got. The aircraft landing uh, on final right there, you can see. And we have one departing right in front. The rotor in this case is acts like the wing, and so the yellow lines that you see here that we taxied on are the taxiways, of course, and we need to make sure that we are inside of the yellow uh, double lines that you see because otherwise it's uh, an encroachment onto the taxiway. All right, right now we set our brake, and the brake is set good, not a problem there. Altimeter set, okay. Compass was working good, oil pressure is good and we're going to continue with our run-up. We know that uh, the taxi and flight controls are free and clear. We did that on taxi, and we set it early. The brake is set. Oil pressure is good. We're going to set the uh, motor RPM up to 3,000, nice and gentle. Yeah. Well, this gyro has magnetos, so we're going to check the magnetos. So first magneto. Little drop in the RPM, that works. Turn it on. Second magneto, notice a little drop in the RPM. That's good. So then we uh, go ahead and we throw it all the way back. That way we know it's going to idle on approach so we don't lose the engine or have it quit while we're on final for landing if we're doing a glide landing. At this point, I'm looking for a couple of things. One, we really don't need the GPS because we're actually in the pattern, but I like to have it on anyway in case something comes up. I can double check frequencies or Every once in a while, they'll have me hold out for a little while, and I can kind of see obstacle clearance and things like that, especially if something were to happen. Here I'm looking at the cylinder head temperature on the Rotax engine. It's liquid-cooled. It needs to be in the green. This is the oil temperature because the cylinders are oil-cooled, and it needs to be above the red line. There's a little red line on top, but there's also one you can't quite see it underneath the orange uh, needle, and we need to have it slightly above that in order to have safe operating temperature for us to take off, and that's what we're looking for right here. So we saw the drop CHT. Is in the green, engine tip green. Uh, in the green. Oh, Tesla 2098 Alpha is holding short um, um, Gulf, holding short of runway 17 right at Gulf, ready for takeoff, I mean, ready for taxi to the active for pattern. Tesla 2098 Alpha hooks ground. Would you like to taxi to 17 left or 17 right at Echo? Uh, if I can get one seven right, that'd be good. Two nine eight alpha. Cessna nine eight alpha taxi north on Fox Trot, hold short of taxiway Echo, and expect only one seven right at Echo. All right, uh, tax, taxi north on Fox Trot, hold short of Echo, and expect runway one seven right. Two zero nine eight alpha. 
Okay, now what I'm doing is I want to make sure the engine temps come up. It's above that little red line. I'm going to go ahead and call and tell them that we're ready for departure. We're going to hold the brake right before we take off and turn from brake to flight to release the rotor, and then we'll start pre-rotating. Let's ground this in general 446 in rectangle. It's triangle run up complete. And uh, is that squad code 5346? Gyro 6, Quebec Tango, affirmative 5346. Hold short of runway 17 left approach, contact tower 118.4. Hold short, 17 left approach, contact tower 118446, Quebec Tango. It's important that you read back everything that they tell you in proper order when you're doing uh, landings and takeoffs at a controlled airport. It's really easy just to become the parrot. And we are uh, stopping right here at the approach line, and once again making sure the rotor is not crossing over the uh, whole short line to the runway. Now we will go ahead and move the frequency to the top that's the tower and contact tower and let them know that we're ready. Six tower, zero, 446 Quebec Tango, holding short 17 left approach, ready for takeoff. Gyro 446 Quebec Tango, Hook tower, make left traffic, runway 17 left, clear for takeoff. 17 left, clear for takeoff, make left traffic, 46 Quebec Tango. And this is going to that traffic so fast, we can cancel We'll go down. ahead and uh, change this from brake to flight to release okay. the rotor head. And the pre-rotator button's done by my thumb. At this point, as we're looking at this and I'm taxing onto the run runway to pre-rotate, we're going to make sure that we have this full forward. We're going to slowly throttle it and get the rotation of the uh, rotor going up to approximately 200 RPM in the MTO. When that's done in this case, you'll notice that uh, the, uh, the engine RPM will be coming up to 3. Thousand. The rotor RPM is getting close to 200. Then I will go ahead and start initiating the takeoff. And there we go. We're at about 200. I let go of the brake, the pre rotator, the brake to the back. The nose will come up. We'll get across the rotor speed, almost 300, we'll lift off at about 55 and do our climb out of 55. Beautiful, beautiful climb out. Now you see the uh, top over the circle right here. Use a thumb trip right here to trim it out so that I'm climbing out of 55 knots, so that's climb speed.
So we have a big runway here. We are cleared for the parallel. So one seven left. And we'll come in, doing our best to maintain 55, our best glide. Right. To do our pre-landing checklist, second fuel pump is on, landing light on, reduce engine RPM for proper glide, which we did. Okay. Pitch for 55 knots, which we're doing. Align center on the runway. We're drifted a little to the right. Maintaining best glide, 55. Coming. In a line straight for a nice smooth touchdown.
taxi back to parking via the high speed. The MTR actually has a pump in the thumb trim. Once you land and you turn it to brake, it pumps up the rotor so you don't have to hold it uh, hard forward. But you're going to have to hold the stick forward anyway just to make sure it doesn't uh, have a pop strike or anything like that. So maybe you can't even go. to go ahead and pack taxi back to parking, but I'm going to monitor ground here and double check with them anyway. To the Alpha ramp will be fine, sir, for one Charlie Echo. Fair one Charlie Echo, roger. Turn right on Echo, cross from a 17 left approach, and taxi to the Charlie ramp. Right on Echo, cross 17 left, and uh, taxi to the uh, Charlie ramp for 501 Charlie Echo. It's ground drive 46 of Ectango, just confirm and taxi to parking, I can let the uh, twin go by. And gyro 6 of Ectango, roger, give way to the Baron and taxi to parking. Roger that, we'll give way to the Baron and taxi behind him to parking, 46 of Ectango. All right, there you go. Just in case, because they gave me permission, I wanted to make sure and uh, not encroach on anything when you're on uh, Powered airport, it's always good to double check. Certainly doesn't hurt for any reason whatsoever. We'll go ahead and we'll taxi back. It's nice to have the uh, rotor stop right dead center there. If I needed to, I could have bumped it over a little. But it helps prevent having the rotor being picked up by the wing while you're trying to maneuver back to where you need to go. Go scrap, go Neal 861 Hotel Charlie. Go Neal 861 Hotel Charlie, hook scrap. They're sitting in a deal with Charlie. They'd like to pick up IFR clear to uh, Long Beach. Golden Eagle 861 Hotel Charlie, you're clear to Golf 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 Airport via Lufkin 6 departure. There we go. Lufkin, and correct. we're back here to where we hang out with Texas flight. Expect 11,000, one, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 123.